Dave, we're in Coventry University today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what we're doing here? Uh, well, today is uh, an experience for our trainees, uh, apprentices. Uh, they get the opportunity to see some of our products working. Uh, the tool which we're looking at today is a diver cutter. Uh, our apprentices are actually more familiar to manufacturing the tools, regrinding the tools. Today they get the opportunity to see them, in, uh, to see them actually running. And we're going to see them running as well today. And oh, we're, yes, yes. We're going to be putting the, the, uh, the cutting tools really to, to the test. Yeah, today we're going to be running the tool to its uh, capacity or within the capacity of the machine. You'll see a various number of uh, processes. Um, but yeah, we're looking to run the, uh, the tools to its full capacity. And when we talk about tools, what is the cutting tool that we're actually going to be using? Uh, the tool today is a diver cutter. It's relatively new. Um, a few uh, design features which make it a little bit uh, special, uh, particularly the, the coating. A very hard coating which enables us to run at high speeds because it can withstand the temperatures. High flute spacing so we can pocket and, and slot mill at very high speeds and feeds. And I think the, the good thing about this exercise is you're actually performing it on a Haas machining centre, yes. which is a, is a popular machine in the UK, yes. and you would class, you know, there are hundreds or thousands of machines out there, so it just shows subcontractors what they can achieve with their machine. Absolutely. Uh, when we normally develop and test these tools, we have much more powerful machines. Um, but in the workplace, we're dealing now with a machine which is more indicative of what our customers are using. So to get the best out of your cutting tool then, Dave, it's also the conditions that surround it? Yeah, exactly. Uh, to optimise the, the performance of the tool, we need stable conditions, not only in the machine, but also in the tool holding. So what we're going to try and demonstrate today are three different holders, a collet chuck, hydraulic chuck, and a high-performance chuck. Okay, so we've explained the importance of work holding stability, but it's equally important we must have tool holding stability. So in the first uh, uh, demonstration we've shown, we have a high performance chuck where we have ultimate maximum stability holding the tool. Now we're going to see an ERCOLIC ch chuck working. This is very common in the, in the workplace. Uh, a very flexible system which is ideal for axial forces. Uh, but when you hear the engagement, you hear the squeal, this is taking up some of the movement that we have in the collet chuck. Once that load is taken up, then that noise disappears. Ideal for axial forces, but not for radial. Okay, so now we want to demonstrate a hydraulic chuck, uh, which is probably one of the most accurate holders that, uh, that is available. Uh, ideal for axial, oh, okay. Um, this really demonstrates the, the point we're making here. This is a holder which is recommended for axial loading, for drilling, tapping, reaming, but not ideal for side loading. Here we see it again in slow motion. Um, because of the lack of stability in the holder, um, it doesn't allow us to take high loading on for side loads. So although it's the most ex one of the most expensive holders, it doesn't mean it's necessarily ideal for this sort of application.